Good morning, my first grade friends. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some subtraction um, strategies and tools that we learned in class that you can also use at home. So to start off, we're going to talk about some tools that you have with you or tools that you can make to help you when you get stuck on a subtraction or an addition problem. So things that we use in school all the time were things like our number line or our 100 chart, which I know that there are resources online that could be printed or you can make a hundred chart on a piece of paper. Something else that we can use that is in our math toolkit is always drawing a picture. So if you have a piece of paper in front of you when you're doing your subtraction problems, draw, draw a picture. You could draw circles, you could draw hearts, and then X them off according to your number sentence because we're taking away. Something else we used in school were objects. So I know we used our counters and we used our unifix cubes, um, but if you're at home, something maybe you can use to help you with your subtraction problems would be things like loose change or maybe some rocks that you find outside to help you. And then something you always have with you are your fingers. You always, always have your fingers to help you with your subtraction and addition problems. All right, so moving on. Important words that have to do with subtraction would be words like taking away or minus or the word subtract. So I was, as we know, adding is putting things together. Subtraction is taking things apart or taking away. All right, so moving on, we're gonna go to our three strategies that we talked a lot about in class that help us when we get stuck on a subtraction problem. And remember, whichever way you like and whatever way you want to use when you see a subtraction or addition problem is a way that you should use. So our first part was drawing our um, part, part, whole model. And we use this for addition and for subtraction. So as you can see here, sorry, on my whiteboard, I have my three. Three is my whole number. So I put that on the top of my diagram. And then I have my parts that make up my whole. I could see that my parts are split into two and they make up the whole on top. So I know, hey, three can be broken down into two parts. So from my model, from my part part model, I know that three has to be the first number since we're subtracting. So we're not gonna think about our whole whole part addition problems. Now we're just thinking about our subtraction. So I know three is my whole number and I'm taking away from three so I put three first in my number sentence. And then I'm taking away two. Let's pretend that one isn't there. So I'm taking away two. And then I need to figure out how many are left. So I know I start with my big number here, my three. And I have my two dots down here. So I could take away from my whole three, take away my part two, and see how many are left. So out of my hole here, I have three. I'm taking away two. Let's cross out two. And how many do I have left? I have one left. So then I look at my number sentence again, and I have my whole three, take away the part two, equals one. And that's how many I have left. And then if you want to double check your answer, you could take a look at your parts and make sure they equal your whole, just like we talked about you could work backwards to check your answer. So I could see that my part here, I have one, and my second part, I have two. I can count those or add them up in my brain. One, two, three, and there is my whole. So there's one way we talked about. Another way we talked about was counting backwards. So again, here's my number sentence that I get. I have five minus two. Something I can do if I wanna use my brain, I could put five in my head, five, and then I can count backwards too. Five, four, three. There's my two. What did I end on? I ended on three. And then I would write in my answer, and just like our part, part, whole, I could think backwards. And I could say, okay, three plus two, does that equal five? So you can always count backwards. Put your number in your head, your big number in your head, Five and count backwards how many your number sentence is telling you to take away. Five, four, three. And then our last way we talked about in school was counting forward. So kind of a switch from counting backwards 
But counting forwards, we would start at our smaller number. So three is my smaller number. So I start my smaller number, I count up to my bigger number. So three plus what equals five? Again, I could do that in my head. Three in my head, and then I can use my fingers or draw a picture. Three, now how do I get to five? Three, four, five. How many do I add? I add two. So I know to get from three to five, I must add two. So then I switch up my number sentence, and I know five minus three is two. All right. Thanks, guys. Hope this has helped.